torsion springs are generally specified to either deliver a torque at a given loaded position or deliver between a minimum and maximum loading position. In this video, we're going to focus on springs formed from round wire and loaded between the two positions. The spring is initially formed and supplied in an unloaded state. Let's call this the free position as shown in the drawing. Let's assume that the horizontal arm is then secured while the vertical arm is rotated to deliver a torque. The designer requires the spring to function between two loading points. So the vertical arm is rotated to an initial operating position. This minimum loading position or angle gives us the lowest torque response from the spring. The vertical arm is then rotated to the maximum operating position and this gives us the maximum torque response. The spring is expected to operate between the two angles when installed within an assembly so everything between these points is our operating window. Exactly what these angles are depends entirely on the capability of the spring configuration set by the designer. All we can say at this stage is all torsion springs have a maximum loading position. And this is shown in the final diagram. It is important that loaded position 2 does not exceed the maximum loading angle. If it does, then the spring will become overstressed. It could immediately fail or may weaken, or in combination it may weaken and then fail over time. To avoid failure due to overloading, we should consider the overall design and spring material under consideration. Let's start by briefly looking at some typical spring wire materials. The following information is just a rough guide. Different material suppliers and spring manufacturers will have differing ideas on material strength. The spring design challenge may also lend itself to one type of material ahead of another due to corrosion resistance or need to minimise relaxation under load. Stainless steels used for spring wire can in many cases be loaded up until 60% of the material tensile limit and in some design scenarios 70% of the tensile limit may be acceptable. Stainless spring steel grades in this category include 316, 302 and 177. We will look at some of the governing standards for the materials later in the video. Music wire can be more durable than stainless steel and in many cases can support higher stress levels of 70%, stretching to 80% in some cases. Check with your spring manufacturer for guidance if you're unsure. Hard drawn wire is similar to music wire but tends to have a lower tensile limit. It performs similarly in terms of percentage loading. Alloy steels tend to be a combination of chrome and silicon. Percentage wise they are similar to music wire and hard drawn wire but tend to be weaker steel. Each of the materials shown have pros and cons. Stainless steels tend to be less magnetic than other types. It also has good corrosion resistance. Let's now look at spring design factors. So let's start by listing some key design considerations. Spring rate tells us how stiff the wire is and also governs the torque transmitted. The larger the wire diameter, the greater the stiffness and therefore higher the rate. The torque delivering capability of the two loading lengths is directly linked to the spring rate. The spring stress we already know is important, but we need to factor it in here as it will form part of the calculation. We can say based on material selection, the maximum loaded position or angle is partially governed by the allowable tensile limit percentage. The overall diameter of the spring coils. This is important as the spring needs to fit inside a part or assembly. 
the spring may be installed over a rod or within a tube for support. Rod support is preferred as it better prevents the spring from straying off centre during loading and makes for a more efficient performing spring. The overall length may sound irrelevant, but if we rotate in the direction the coils were formed, then the overall length of the spring will increase. So again, it needs to fit in the assembly. The spring rate is torque divided by loading angle. We need to pick one of the loading positions, understand our loading requirement and transfer this to the torque. This is explained in the previous video, so I'm just going to assume we know our torque requirement is based on loading angle T, the highest loading angle. The alternative way to calculate the rate is using this calculation. Young's modulus times wire diameter to the power of 4 divided by 10.8 times mean diameter times the number of active coils in the spring. Stress for round wire springs is 32 times the moment, the moment being the torque at either loaded length over pi times wire diameter to the power of 3 times a stress correction factor. Stress correction is needed as stress shifts within the wire towards the inner coil diameter under load. This leads to a higher stress at the inner diameter. Stress correction is 4 times c squared minus c minus 1 over 4 times c times c minus 1. c is basically the spring index. Spring index is mean coil diameter over wire diameter. C ideally needs to be greater than 4 but less than 12. Anything less than 4 is hard to form. Anything greater than 12 is likely to tangle with other springs when boxed during manufacture. The key calculations affecting the spring design include rate and stress. whereas the key design influences include the torque at the min and max working angles and spring diameter and length, which are dictated by the part or assembly the spring will fit into. A couple of key standards worth considering when looking to design springs include EN 13906 Part 3 and BS 1726 Part 3. Just to finish, let's quickly look at the spring materials in a bit more detail. Music wire and hard drawn wire types are high carbon content. They tend to be magnetic and lack corrosion resistance. ANSI ASTM standards A228 and A227 cover these materials. Alloy steel wire tends to be heat treated to relieve forming stress and is governed by ASTM A401. Stainless steel spring wire tends to be less magnetic than the other wires. It also has a better corrosion resistance than other materials. Lastly, non-ferrous alloy wires such as phosphor bronze and beryllium copper have good corrosion resistance and greater electrical condu conductivity than other materials. Some of these materials are also covered in equivalent EN standards. OK, so that's it for this video. In the next, I'm going to go through torsion spring length and diameter change under load.